We're talking about what you're talking about. Get real. No. No. Nope. This is a <laughs> sham. <laughs> it's finally here. Drum roll. Color. No, it was yours a color. Welcome to DBL. Happy Monday, everybody. Yeah. Happy Monday. We're arguing it's about Tuesday. what color air. Oh. <laughs> Hey, you didn't know. I didn't know. <laughs> You're laughing. I was sure today was Monday. Oh, I thought for right. sure it was too. <laughs> yeah, no. Oh, well, it's thank the, you. It was Halloween. Halloween felt like. You, you know. know what? It's a blur. Yeah. It's a yeah. blur because we celebrated Halloween for the past four days right. with mm -hmm. the kids. So. I sent you a text and you literally said that you were like, I don't know where I am. We've been doing <laughs> I'm over it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm over Halloween. We put up our Christmas decoration today. Yes. Boom. Yes. This is how we do it. Oh, Have wow. you got your PSL? Huh? You got a PSL yet? Yeah. Pumpkin I got one. I got one. I got one. All right, let's get into some Halloween, though, with the celebs over the weekend. So the queen of Halloween, Heidi Klum, went all out again this year. She transformed into a worm for her annual Halloween party oh, in New York. Halloween. The only part that was visible was her face. She went with her husband, of course, Tom Cowlitz, who was a fisherman using the worm as bait. <laughs> Hilarious. <laughs> Here's Heidi squirming on the blue carpet. Now that that's, that's commitment. Yeah. Listen, that's pretty good. I love pretty it. good. That is cringe. I, I don't. Why is that cringe? Have you? Are you looking at the things I'm looking at? That's yeah. pretty good, actually. That's pretty good. So inside the party, Heidi changed into this sheer bodysuit, almost nude, but kept her face makeup on. Kind of weird. That's <laughs> yes, weird. That's it, weird. That is. All well, right. So is she? Meta or what is it? Metamorph like a butterfly? Metamorph right. size? Yeah, into a butterfly or like the. But worms don't but do that. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. Worms don't really do that. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and it's Tuesday. <laughs> Can we just start over? <laughs> this is what happened when we take a day off. Right. You know what I mean? Oh, man. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's real. Hey, look, I that's not for me that outfit. But I love when people push the envelope, Erica. And like, you have to have extremes on both ends. You're gonna have the people that are like, I'm not dressing up this year. And somebody's like, me and my husband are doing a co-worm fisherman with a missing eye outfit. And that, and some everybody else kind of falls in the middle. But I do like when people kind of push it. And this is what she's known to do. I thought it was really cool. I'm just like, you you can't access your arms, and I don't know what the restroom situation is it just seems like a lot it does i don't know i thought i'm first of all i love commitment i went as fauci and you could tell i went all out right but for me there wasn't like a story about a worm it was just very random and very like gross good for her for committing you sound like but you're really super sick. super gross like gross gross but good for her <laughs> okay i thought it was good i loved it i, I like that all right so what we have some more uh costumes Let's roll it. It's it's Tuesday. You know what I yeah. mean? Let's get to some other ones. Okay, so we also got a roundup of the best celebrity costumes this year. First up, check out Neil Patrick Harris, MPH, and his family. They went as fast food mascots, including the Wendy's girl, the Burger King, Ronald McDonald, and Colonel Sanders. Lizzo made a very convincing Marge Simpson that she posted to Instagram, but she didn't stop there. Lizzo also transformed into one of her Miss or into her one of our icons, Miss Piggy. <laughs> <laughs> that was perfect timing. Kim K got all decked out in blue going as the X-Men character Mystique. But get this, she showed up like that to a party at Tracy Ellis Ross's house. But here's the thing. It wasn't a costume party. She just went like that. Yikes. Well, because Tracy Ellis Ross, along with Gabrielle Union, both turned 50, so it was Tracy's birthday celebration. So nobody gave Kim K a heads up? I don't know. I think her assistant is going to probably have to answer some questions <laughs> post-party. Uh, honestly, That's super. I, I think it's, I don't know if she should have stayed. But you can't leave when you show up like that. You have to ride it out. But she had to have known. I was looking at her face in those pictures. She didn't. She looks like she knows. If if this you is not were good. turning 50, Tori. Yeah. And you had a party. Yeah. And then Kim Kardashian came like that and kind of stole your thunder. Would you be a little upset? Maybe. <laughs> That's honest. Yeah, yeah. Maybe. I think what's what to me. What to me is, if you have a 50th birthday party on Halloween, I do understand you might think it's a costume party. Like I get where the mistake was made here. Do you think you have to make that explicit when in the? Yeah, invitation? if it's a Halloween party, just be like, yeah, maybe make it more explicit. But yeah, it's a. We're talking about Kim and not Tracy, but I'm sure they're they're friendly. I don't know if you have to really indicate that because it is your birthday. 
play. Well, on Halloween? You don't well, my birthday's on Valentine's, Valentine's Day, birthday. and I'm never yeah. like, I, people don't show up as Cupid. You okay, know, like, okay let, let's say, <laughs> but you don't dress up for yeah. Valentine's Day. Right. Like, Erica, you have been known to throw a, a, a party or two. Let's say that you were doing a, a party that happened to fall in the Super Bowl, but it would like your family's going to be there and you were not going to be showing the game. Would you not put that on the invitation? Okay, the but Super that's Bowl would not be being played at this party that is on Super Bowl Sunday. Okay, but first of all, I wouldn't have a party that wasn't a Super Bowl party on Super Bowl Sunday, but I would have a birthday party that happened to fall on a, on a holiday weekend. It wasn't on Halloween. It was just Halloween weekend. So oh. you get a 50th birthday invitation. I would assume it wouldn't be a costume party over assuming that it would be. And I would also be very particular about what is the dress because it could have really been anything. Like Tracy had like three different looks for her 50th birthday. It, it was a theme, but it wasn't like a theme for Halloween. Like, I don't think we have to look at all the holidays in wow. order to decide. I'm exhausted. I'm exhausted. I'm not going. <laughs> Click and I'm no. Saying. I'm not coming. I'm not coming. I'm all just right. saying. Just pay attention. I went to it's a gender much reveal on, on Sunday, the day before Halloween, and it was an all white party. I paid attention. I wore white. Oh, you know I would have missed that. Yeah, <laughs> you know that. Wow, let's get to a couple other costumes here. So Kendall Jenner went as a sexy Jesse from Toy Story. I dig that. That's you should see cool. the, the she, when she turns around. Wow, <laughs> I, I already did in my mind. Okay. So check out Kerry Washington, who went as Lionel Richie. <laughs> That's, that's awesome. Weekend. That's really that's good. You just hit her dancing. That was <laughs> just, I embarrassed my kids all night long. <laughs> that is really good. I love that. And Diddy may have won Halloween this year with his Joker costume. Wow, that's I really good too. Amazing. He might have. He even posted a video of himself in character asking why everyone why so serious. Has Diddy ever been in a movie? Mm. Yeah. He's been acting in a couple of things. I, I think Diddy could. I think Diddy's showing us he can be a good actor. What's that? He played that serious role, wasn't he? On Death Row in one of those. Uh, did he play like a serious actor? I'm racking my brain. I'm trying to. Someone looked at. Someone looked at. I'm pretty sure I know that movie. I he, Diddy could become. What a, it was it? An actor. Monsters Ball. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Well, he. Yeah. Uh, did you guys see that he got into an altercation on the street? Uh, yeah. Dressed as the Joker with oh, a yeah. Ring. But he stayed in character. Is this it? And yes. Yeah. Oh. He stayed in character as the Joker while fighting. Oh, so maybe he just kind of play fighting. Yeah. You know, like that's his character. Someone called him a, a, a word he didn't like, and he kind of went all Heath Ledger, which was very committed, you know? I guess. Okay. <laughs> I, I think some people just become the costume a lot like our own Sam Shocker. Oh, you know, yeah. She became Pete Davidson. She totally some became Pete Some people were wearing Davidson. costumes. Yeah. She became Pete. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I did notice a lot of, like, highly airbrushed photos. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, like, what is, couldn't we just make that digitally? Is there something to be said for becoming the person or the co character or something like that? I I see I I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I'm, try, I, I'm trying to I don't like explain. Wait, what do you yeah. mean? Explain what you mean. Like because a lot of people posted like super like some of those were like very highly airbrushed for, where it looked like, you mean, it was like Kendall so Jenner? digital. Yeah, like okay. it was so digitally oh. done that you're like couldn't you have just like why not just take a picture because now it just looks like somebody created you to look like that. Like, like they, it looks like graphics. Right, oh, like a graphic design over yeah. a, a photo. That's, that's the pressure of having that perfect photo now. Is people yeah. are like, We're going to have to check out the full costume for journalistic purposes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, coming up on DBL, our interview with Judge Mathis. How he's now celebrating his 24th season on TV. And Tom Brady talks about his divorce from Giselle. What does he have to say about their split? There's going to be a lot of internet chatter. Mm -hmm. That's where the red flag goes up. We are never going really? to agree on this. No. It's ignorant. And for me, it was just like a damn shame. You tell me I need to do something. I'm going to do the exact opposite. You know why I don't call in sick? Camera hog. Just two sugars. I was going to tell you something funny. My friend Eileen, who's a stand-up, she said um, she went up to someone at a party and goes, I'm distantly related to Marie Curie. And the guy goes, it's pronounced Mariah Carey. <laughs> <laughs> and I always think about that. That's so great. annoying. Yeah. Uh, I love when people like, or, or there was a woman on a plane and someone was, um, they were talking about, I think yeah. some scientific theory, and he quoted her 
he goes, you must not have read McAllister at all, which is a paper. And she goes, I am McAllister. <laughs> That's me. I love when people do that and they don't realize. Those little smug moments. Yeah, you've totally. I was okay. telling Al that someone okay. thought it was ratatouille instead of ratatouille. Yeah, so right. at the party, they're like, it's okay, actually cool. pronounced yeah, ratatouille. By the way, ratatouille was like the first movie that I was forced to binge watch with my kids. Because that was like, oh, no, it's a great movie. It's just like they hit that age where they just like, it was over, on over, repeat. Over. Other parents like were, you know, what was it? I don't know if it's called. What's the one with the, the little girl from the island? Moana? Moana. Moana. Yeah, you can always tell the like, little how girl from the island. island. <laughs> <laughs> I was on it. I've never seen Moana because I don't have children. So I stopped at Ratatouille. I haven't seen Moana, Tangled. I've never seen Frozen. I don't think I've seen Frozen all the way through. Is that what it's called? Frozen, right? Yeah. It's all about when your kids get stuck. When they're stuck at home, they're not going out with their friends. And like, so like for two years, just one or two movies is just over and over. Like, Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol. Yes, we were Bubble Guppies. We were. Someone went as Paw Patrol, and I was like, cool, Thomas the Train. Oh, yeah. I would think uh, Peppa Pig is would have been big too this year. I didn't realize how big Peppa the Pig is. I think Mattel bought it. Is she just a British pig? What does she do? I think she's a Canadian invention though. Oh, but she's just a cute little pig. Yeah, she's kind of like Peppa. Welcome back. So we're hearing from Tom Brady for the first time since he finalized his divorce from Giselle last Friday. So on the Let's Go podcast, Tom admitted it's been tough managing a public split and playing football. Let's have a listen. It's a very amicable situation, and I'm really focused on two things and taking care of my family and certainly my children. And secondly, doing the best job I can to win football games. You know, everyone's going through different things. We all have our unique challenges in life and we're all humans and we do the best we could do. So as far as Giselle is concerned, sources told People Magazine that the split was hard at first, but she has lived her own life for many years and is not afraid to do things by herself. We're not even kind of putting it in perspective how fast this divorce is. It's already finalized, done, out there in the public, finalized. So this had to be going on for a little bit, oh, yeah. a little bit of time. Yeah, and I, when I did some research, it just said that she had been threatening divorce for years. So this wasn't, as you said, a quick thing. This has been a slow glacial sort of collapse and they had it all in place already. So that's interesting. Well, I think most people who get divorced know it's coming yeah. for quite some time. Yes. Um, and the fact that they did it in such a very, very rapidly wound up situation, like I think most people could learn from this yeah, go situation. Quick. Like, yeah. okay, announce and then Just the next thing. I mean, I, I I certainly know just having been divorced, most people didn't know that we were even thinking about divorcing until our divorce was very final. Mm. Um, so, which makes it, uh, it also creates a lot of issues for people thinking that you're together or married to someone that you aren't married to. Mm -hmm. um, but in this situation, I think they did it the best that they possibly could do. And uh, hey, I said, it, there doesn't seem to be a scandal here, so. And he's yeah. taking in his stride. I mean, he's kind of putting himself out there. Giselle is putting herself out there. He even dresses the Grim Reaper. I think we Did have. He really? And he just put insert joke here. Oh, that's you funny. know what I mean? So he's kind of taking it in stride. You know, like listen, he's not doing great at football. His right. relationship isn't doing great. So he's kind of. I, I, I kind of like. And that. how many people are in that position, Jeff? I know when I got yeah. divorced, I was. Things at work aren't going so great. Things at home aren't going so great. And a double what, whammy. Yes, yes. Whammy? Well, it's, it hits. You just don't, it's not a whammy, it's a whammy. Oh, okay. You suck yeah. the air yeah. right out of the no, room. I'm messing with you, but no, it, it is a double whammy. And I do think that a lot more people, because they look at Tom Brady, he's a good looking guy. He looks like a model. He's a professional football player, very rich. But I think a lot of people can relate to his situation and Giselle's because with when I recently split from who I was with, it had been happening for a while, like you've been talking, and I had gotten used to spending time by myself yeah. and used to going out on the weekends and doing, finding things that I like to do now because you haven't been kind of single for a while. So uh, I wish the best for both of them, and, and I think this is important for letting people know if you feel like the relationship is coming to an end because you just don't want to blindside somebody where they're planning for the next 10 years mm. and you got one and a half feet out the door. Yeah. I'm still reeling from the... <laughs> 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 All right, coming up on... I want to pee...
when, when, it's, when the word sounds like what it is, a whammy. Oh, what's another example? Um, um. Pow? Pow, kapow, bang. Okay. <laughs> we are really kicking the dirt off those tires, huh? Come up on DBL, we talk with Judge Mathis about being, <laughs> or about having one of the most popular courtroom shows on TV. Does it feel like you keep finding spider webs in your home no matter how many times you clean? In a 2016 study, researchers found spiders in every home they checked. In fact, one is probably looking at you right now. Verify viewer Carrie emailed us to ask about a claim she heard that humans end up swallowing a few spiders every year while sleeping. So let's verify. Do humans regularly swallow spiders while sleeping? Our sources are the Burke Museum in Seattle, Floyd Shockley with the Smithsonian National Museum of Natural History, and Michael Bruce, founder of thesleepdoctor.com. The idea is that if we sleep with our mouths open, then a spider might walk inside, causing us to swallow it unconsciously. As near as we can recall, it was first published in a book on insect and spider folklore back in 1954, was the first mention of it. Then it proliferated uh, over the years. Our sources say there was never any scientific evidence that this happens. Spiders are not gonna walk into basically a dark, moist cave where all that's coming out of it is carbon dioxide. That doesn't really make a lot of sense just from an etymology standpoint. Bruce says nine in 10 people sleep with their mouths closed, meaning the spiders can't get in. If you're sleeping with your mouth open, you're probably snoring and the vibration is gonna scare them away. Put simply, the Burke Museum writes, for a sleeping person to swallow even one live spider would involve so many highly unlikely circumstances that for practical purposes, we can rule out the possibility. No such case is on formal record anywhere in scientific or medical literature. So no, humans do not regularly swallow spiders while sleeping. This is an urban legend. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. If I got on the space shuttle and flew up to the moon, she up be on the no, rocket right behind. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you, you notice know her last name hard, right? Yeah. We ain't married. Change my name. Your Honor, she went and changed her last Maybe. name to Hart. Oh, the, the, oh, no. You get what I'm saying? That's when I knew something was wrong. I, I like that she just tried to get ahead of it. Like, yeah, I just changed my name. We all do that. Uh, <laughs> welcome back to DBL. He lays down the law in his long running hit courtroom show, and now he's ruling his family in their new docuseries. Earlier, we caught up with Judge Greg Mathis to talk about his 24 years, count them, 24 years on TV. Take a look. Judge Mathis. Yes. Yes. I've been waiting to talk to you about this. I have a lot of questions, but first up, really important, you have spoken out about Kanye's controversial statements. We've talked about it on the show. He's currently losing billions. He's getting major backlash, but I'm interested in your take on the legal issue, especially the George Floyd family suing him for defamation for claiming that George Floyd died of a fentanyl overdose uh, for 250 million. What do you feel about that? Well, I think that they'll probably be successful yeah. because it's been determined legally that um, he died of strangulation. And I think with regard to the companies that are divesting and uh, uh, their contracts with him, I think they have that right based on the morals clause that all contracts typically have now with talent. So I think he's in a lot of trouble or he's going to lose a lot of money, put it that way. But that doesn't seem to be his motivation. And so there are other avenues. He apologized to the Jewish community for any that he may harm. Now we're just waiting on him to apologize to the black community. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Might be a while. Might be a minute. Yeah. yeah. Judge, I got to say, I love that jacket. Love, I kissing up to Thank a judge you. is never a bad thing, but I do like that <laughs> shade of color. <laughs> Congratulations on your 24th season. Why do you think the show has lasted so long? Because 24 seasons, that takes something special. 
People watch television for escape. They don't watch television. They can go to their local courthouse and sit up there and watch some boring judge. Uh, they come to have fun with me, and the viewers watch because it's fun and, and informative. Judge, you have to give me a second to stretch my legs here because I need to say this to you. Uh, this uh, past Saturday, I was in Chicago uh, performing. I was talking to my best friend in Miami. And uh, before we knew we were interviewing you, he said, who's the realest dude in television? And I said, Judge Mathis. And it, you need to understand how much of an impact you've had on the community and how much we see you and we appreciate you, oh, brother. Yeah. Uh, and it leads right into this yeah, question. Man, cool. yeah. Honestly, man, you are, you are a real one. Uh, one of your court cases inspired you to send a young man to college. How did you personally relate to this case and this human being? And can you give us an update on this young man? Yes, what occurred, as some might know, he came to my show. A young man had escaped the streets of um, Compton. His mother and father died of HIV, AIDS, based on um, uh, intravenous heroin use. He went and lived with his aunt, San Francisco, Oakland area, and uh, uncle or his aunt's husband was very uh, abusive and in court uh, admitted to throwing the young man's clothes out because he came in at 12 and I said you should be mentoring this young man based on his circumstances uh, he's your nephew he said no he's nothing to me oh, and I don't wow. want to see anything other than him to go to jail wow. and so I had an immediate uh, reaction that uh, kind of lambasted him but it touched me it was probably the most emotional case I've had in 24 years wow. and I told the young man that if he wanted to go to community college we send him and he came back two years later with his associate's degree uh, and is the minister oh of the yeah, division of his church. Wow. Wow. Yes. Incredible. Yes. I mean, you walk the walk. We only have about 30 seconds left, but this is super important. Your son recently came out on your show, Mathis Family Matters. Was that a difficult moment for you as a father? And what do you hope to communicate to the audience? Yes, you know, they misinter many misinterpreted that scene because he had come out to us as a teenager. What he was telling me is that he had not allowed his friends and uh, colleagues to know, mm. and that troubled me. And I asked why. He said, because it was to protect my career. Aww. And so it suggested to me he, he denied himself for his dad, wow. and that was very troubling. And I will continue always to be a member of the LBGTQ, supported and advocates, because I don't want any other child to experience that. Wow. You that really said what are you listen, doing? we need more of you. We 1,000% do. You. Thank you so much, Judge Mathis. As always, DBL Nation, you can watch Thanks. new episodes of Judge Mathis weekdays. Check your local listings for when and where to tune in. We'll be right back. Thank, Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We looked at the laws in all 50 states, plus here in D.C., and found a majority of the country actually requires employers to give employees time off to vote on election days. The states that are here on this map in green. That includes paid and unpaid time off. And if you check the fine print, some states require giving advance notice or may allow an employer to designate specific voting time or might not have to offer it if an employee has hours before or after their shift when the polls are open. Let's zoom in on the DMV. In D.C., district code requires employers give up to two hours paid leave to vote, even if it's not an election in D.C. It cannot count against the employee's PTO. The law does allow an employer to request notice of that leave in advance and designate specific time when the employee can go vote. That could include during early voting days. In Maryland, the law requires employees who claim to be a registered voter up to two hours paid time off on election day to cast their ballot. That's if they don't have two hours time off already while the polls are open. Voters do need to be able to prove to their boss that they use that time to go vote with a form from the state election board. And finally, to the Commonwealth, Virginia has no law requiring employers give time off to vote. Election Day is not a federal holiday, though lawmakers in the past have tried to change that with a few different proposals. How about federal employees? According to the U.S. Office of Personnel Management, federal employees can get up to four hours administrative leave to vote, as well as up to four hours of leave to work as poll workers or election observers. This can be on Election Day or in the early voting period leading up to it. With your Verify, I'm Abby Larico.
Let's be honest, we've all guessed a time or two about how heavy something is before putting it in the mail and hoped it wouldn't come back for having insufficient postage. But you probably wouldn't want to take a chance with your ballot. Some people are worried about how much postage to use, if it's needed at all, and what happens if they guess wrong. So let's verify. Will the Postal Service deliver ballots if they don't have enough postage? Our sources are the U.S. Postal Service and the National Conference of State Legislatures. In 19 states and D.C., no postage is required to mail in a ballot. If you live elsewhere, it depends on your election officials, and you may be responsible for the postage. Many ballots need just a single first-class stamp, but if there's a lot on the ballot making it extra bulky, then you'll likely need a second stamp if it weighs more than an ounce. But it's not the end of the world if you miscalculate the postage your ballot needs. The USPS says they'll still deliver it because ballots get special handling over regular mail. So yes, the Postal Service will deliver ballots if they don't have enough postage. But election officials and your tax dollars might foot the bill for the missing stamps. And if you really don't want to pay for postage, many places have drop boxes that you can use for free. With your Verify, I'm Brandon Lewis. Welcome back. When it comes to your home, did you know your bathroom can get you a huge bang for your buck? We're talking about it in today's remodeling tips sponsored by Jacuzzi. When looking to upgrade your bathroom, experts say avoid changing the layout. Rearranging the room can be costly, especially if you move the plumbing. Next, pick a vanity with storage. Choosing what one with drawers is your best option. And most importantly, upgrade your shower and replace your standard tub with a larger high tech one. That's where Jacuzzi can help give your bathroom a spa-like feel by letting a jacuzzi bath remodel dealer replace your old tub or your old dated tub I should say. Jacuzzi offers an unmatched stress-free remodeling process. Visit jacuzzibathremodel.com or call 800-523-1523. All right, so we have some very exciting news. Yes. You guys ready for this? Right. We've got an exciting contest starting up tomorrow, okay? You have a chance to win a luxury vacation at Sandals Resorts, newest location, Sandals Royal Curacao. It's a four day, three night escape for two to beautiful Curacao. Watch DBL every day for a word of the day for your chance to win. The winner will be announced on DBL November 23rd. Ooh. Hey. I, still, I still keep in touch with the people who went on the last sandals contest. Really? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go on this one with the new winners. <laughs> You're not See, allowed. <laughs> <Can> I, <laughs> I think you tried to go on with the other. Yes. Ones. Well, one of these years is gonna hit. <laughs> 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 Details new every day. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Oh.